first step we need to take is in, uh, in Revit is go up the top and click on insert. You can choose the Revit, insert your Revit cloud. We're going to do it by origin, center to center. <coughs> It'll pop in and uh, first thing we never want to do is, in this case, you won't have to do this in the future, but we're going to rotate this so that the one of the walls is um, perpendicular or parallel to the bottom line so that we can cut sections and things like that easier. Here I'm going to do it just real quick in Revit step into the bottom. Revit finds the wall and then I can just rotate around until I'm uh, parallel with the with the 90 degrees. So now we need to set up our levels so we can cut a section and take that section near the uh, insertion point where that we can take a look at um, each one of the levels. One thing I wanted to do too is show you that when you insert a point cloud, Revit automatically thinks the point cloud's meter, so it goes ahead and scales it to get it to feet. So that's important to keep your Revit clouds in metric so that the Revit can handle it itself. Here I've gone to the section view and we'll change the scale so that uh, we can take a look at and move the levels to get those set real quick. And just grab the end and pull them out so that to expand the area. And we can move the cloud up to level zero. In the future, the origin will be set once we get the cloud fully processed so that when it pops into Revit, you should use origin to origin and not have to move it. it zero should be the whatever we've decided that point to be. But here I'm going to move it up. So zero now equals what Revit says zero is. And we'll pull this level up just to the mezzanine here. And Revit does a pretty good job at snapping to the, the point cloud finding actual planes and things in the point cloud pretty good job but we usually do it and then zoom in and, and help it find it a little better here you can see we scan from below and above so we'll just move that up until we get to the upper line work point cloud on that and then we'll copy this up to make a new level out of that for the roof and again it snaps to it pretty well from that point We've got Revit set up with us levels. I think the next thing we probably need to do, and you can see as you zoom in and out, that Revit loads points. It will not load all your points. This just has a limited point cloud engine, but all softwares do. They have to have a specialized uh, engine to load everything, so this is not unusual. Here you can look from the top, and you can see now level one shows from the view range it will show kind of what the floor looks like and what we'd like to do is we can make a quick floor plan with the point cloud just by changing our view range just a little bit we're going to bring the view range up off the floor so you can't see that floor maybe here we'll just put it a foot and now the floor is gone so you can see the walls and everything from and you won't see a full thickness of the wall because we hadn't because we have not scanned the exterior yet but once we scan the exterior when you do this you would see the full wall thicknesses all over also by just making that and we'll cut another section we may use later across the other axis and um, you can see that it just taking a look at it you can see the levels are still set where we had set them before on the ceiling and the mezzanine level and this is just another view of the point cloud itself you see we cut it right through the middle the floor undulates some so it won't be level right this second. Once we get our survey control in uh, tied to this cloud, it'll completely flatten the floor as much as the floor is actually flattened in real life, but we'll see what that turns out to be. Again, back to the top. And one thing we probably need to do is go ahead and you see level two here. That's what uh, the mezzanine level looks like. We need to go ahead and set up our grids and columns, column lines. Uh, one of the first things you need to try to do in, inside Revit so that you have a baseline for everything to work off of. We'll make a little cross section here that we're going to use in a little bit to demonstrate how to measure inside Revit. And actually we could go ahead and measure here uh, without column lines by just putting references in, but reference planes in. But uh, right the second I'll show you, if you type in WT inside Revit, it'll bring up the two windows or any two windows or four windows, six windows, it'll tile them for you just by typing WT. And here we're looking down on the plan view at the section and the right hand side is showing the section. So as we move it back and forth just using the arrow keys, we can kind of get into an area of interest that we can use in here in a little bit. So the next thing to do is let the get Revit, we'll put in some column lines, get those set up and I'll show you that uh, you can
can kind of see the columns on this level, but if we go to level two, the columns stand out a little better because they don't have so many boxes of things stacked around them at that height. So you can see the columns stand out, and you can see both sides of the column there in the point cloud where we scan from both directions. And so we'll snap to the middle of that column and put, pull it down to uh, establish our first grid line. I need to change that number so that it starts with number one on our grids. And again, what we'll do is we can just copy this line up to the next set of columns that we can see in our view. And then we'll take it to the center of that column. Once we get it in the right place, we just move it up. There it is, the center of the column. Column happens to be twisted another 90 degrees in this case, so center is easy to find. And here we can check the dimension and see exactly what that distance was. And you can see it's just over 50 feet almost an inch over 50 feet so we can use that as a basis to set up the rest of our grids and then we'll check them against the existing point cloud as we build them so I can just type in 50 feet copy down go take a look see if I need to realign that grid line maybe just to here maybe not uh, but then I can just use those bases though every time just 50 50 50 down each time here I can go up and down the column line just to see how much the columns vary and take a best main, uh, mean fit of the variations in each one of the column positions and actually may have to do with the columns leaning as they go up is why you get more variation here and you could cross check that against the first floor but again just copy them down 50 50 50 best fit and those get done then we can do the other columns in the other direction other grids in the other direction find the first uh, well I guess I need to pull these out real quick and get the so we can see that all the grids are extended past the end of the project. And now we can go down and start the grids in the other direction. And again, find a column that you can see real well, your basis column that you want to start from. And you can see that blue line popped up because Rabbit was actually looking at the extension of that point cloud. So it does see the point cloud. It does have some intelligence about it to see and understand planes in the point cloud. I'm we'll going to change this to A, so as I copy down each one of the grids from here, it'll, it'll go up alphabetically. Again, I'm going to copy it down one time to a best fit to the next column line, figure out what that dimension is, and then use that dimension to establish the rest of my grids. But each time I go in and shift the grids to get them perfectly lined up. Once you get all the grids established, then you can do anything uh, quicker. You know, add all the columns that you want to uh, anybody that you're familiar with Revit the grid lines can control a lot and make a, your modeling a lot easier now you've established the whole system so back to that section we had opened up earlier we can take a look it's around grid line three but we can take a look in there and make some quick measurements and one way to do that is just by establishing reference planes Revit will not measure directly to the cloud it's up to you to establish a plane that where you want to measure to. So here uh, we're going to measure the bottom of this duct work. You can see that Revit snapped to it pretty well, but we're going to move that down maybe just a hair to get it right to the bottom of that duct. And it probably was just sagging. So where Revit grabbed it at was a different spot from where in, in distance. I probably have a 10 foot section cut open right the second. You can thin it out to a tenth or something so you look exactly at the plane that you want to look at in depth. It tried to save on me. So here we're just going to measure down to level one and there again immediate dimensions and we can even shift the units a little bit so that uh, you can have that rounded off by choosing the manage tab and go to your length units and you can change that to fractional here we'll just do a quarter inch so that you don't get some uh, measurements that are way out there it depends on what accuracy you're looking for of course and again if we want to establish reference planes in another direction uh, maybe on these two columns then we can measure between those and Revit will try to snap to the edge of those columns and notice I'm not zooming in and trying to pick exactly and things like that it's just Revit it is will extend those faces and kind of seize the face we'll zoom in and see exactly how Revit did here for those column faces you can see it snapped pretty well directly to the column face and this is a good way to get uh, your modeling set up and things like that also, but for this we're just trying to pull dimensions. 
straight out of Revit without having to do a lot of modeling. So the reference lines are very useful for that. Just snap a reference line and then you can actually pull dimensions from those reference lines. Um, but that is a good look at uh, measuring and things inside Revit. The basics about that. Uh, one other point we use a lot is 3D viewpoint inside Revit, of course. Uh, you could just click on the 3D view at the top. It'll take you inside the Revit's 3D cloud, and this is an orthographic view, so anything you look at in here is not perspective. You can turn on the section box, though, and this is where you can slice and dice the cloud up a little bit for making it easier to view. We do a whole lot of our mo 3D modeling inside this view. view. We'll get a reference plane or something set in the other views, but then we actually come into this view to model from because you can see the cloud a lot clearer. And you can section it down to just the area you want to work in so you don't have to look at seeing a lot of other information that you're not interested in, but you also get a bigger view than you do in the, any of the 2D plan views. Another view we could take a look at is the perspective view where you can actually do a walkthrough if you want to take a look at the cloud. So we can choose the camera, set the camera where you'd like it, and here we're on the first level, and it'll pick about six feet above the floor automatically. And it's like the whole cloud right in a second. I'll just deselect it. And we can go and choose the walkabout tool or um, off the um, wheel on the side. And you will see you can just walk through the cloud. It's a little more difficult to try to make measurements and things like that in this, but it is a good tool to use. I usually have this window open as another view for us to take a look at uh, this and scene web share up so that you can take a look at the cloud in, in different areas. But this kind of helps you where you can move around in a good bit and fly, look orbit. Uh, you can walk to specific places that you're interested in and then of course once you get there you then you can choose to look around and again it gives you a much better feel of what's been collected. The cloud looks a little light right this second but that's again that's Revit. How you would eliminate that is try to shrink down your view range. Next we can take it into recap and in recap uh, it, you can definitely see the cloud cloud comes out a little better it's a it's a true point cloud engine and you can fly around inside of it and each time you stop as you fly it reduces the point cloud but as you when you stop it loads the point cloud so you get a, a, you know, a denser view of the cloud itself there are some measuring tools in here there's some clipping tools you can subdivide the cloud and re-export it and things like that if you just wanted to try to share a portion of the project with someone you can use recap to break that cloud apart by there's windowing tools, clipping tools, all types that are built into it. And Recap is a free tool unless you want the pro version and typically that's for people like us that want to do our own registration and things if we wanted to use Recap for that. We're not using Recap for that right this second we have in the past. Um, but I'm going to just section this down a little bit. Again the section box is uh, a lot like the one that's inside of Revit. So it just gets us in here so we can kind of take a look at an area show you a couple of measuring tools that Recap has built into it. One that's kind of useful will be the angle tool if you're interested in what the some face angle, the difference between some faces are. I'll pick the floor face, I'm going to pick this wall face, and it'll show you immediately an angle difference between the two. So it sees the two as surfaces. So you can get information like that. One thing that uh, I can't, I don't like using Revit for is to make point to point dimensions if I was trying to like pull a dimension of this beam right here. It appears that I have clicked on the beam and by the way the units right the second is in meters we're going to change this to feet by going to preferences and clicking on uh, the units and changing them feet and inches. But you can see immediately there's something wrong with that measurement. If I twist the screen you can see that I really didn't pick on that beam and this is where you can get in trouble and that's why tools like uh, Revit are important because you can cut a section and just measure in that section. Another tool, Navisworks Simulate, is good to have. You can set it to uh, read recap files or Revit files. And it reads about every, any file in here. I'm just going to set up the point density that we want to look at. And we're going to bring in that point cloud we were just looking at inside Revit and inside Recap. I'm going to show you just inside Navisworks Simulate. And here I'll just type in star R RCS because this RCS is a recap point cloud. Recap support point cloud is what they're calling it there. But here it loads it relatively quickly. Uh, the engine's pretty nice inside Navisworks. It does lots of other things besides what I'm going to show you. But this is just the Navisworks simulate. We use it uh, to create some videos and make some basic measurements. 
and to view the cloud sometimes. Here you can use the same tools. We can walk around just like if we were inside of Revit and recap. And then uh, once we get to an area, maybe we can make a measurement to show you that it does have a good vertical measurement tool because you can lock the axis that you're measuring to. I kind of like it, uh, to, so we like that as a choice. So here I'll choose measure. And I've clicked the bottom of that pipe, and again, you probably want to orbit around to make sure you really did pick the bottom of that pipe, but then you can lock the z-axis. When you when I come down to the floor, you'll see that the, the distance here in meters right a second is 5.3 meters. And as I move around the floor, it's not measuring over to the point. It's measuring directly down to that floor and telling you what the z difference is, and I like that. And we can go to the options and change in the uh, general settings. We can change the units to feet and inches. Hit OK, and now you get feet and inches. So that's a basic look at those three tools, and all of them have their purpose. And, but if you have any questions, please give me a call, 770-513-4645, extension 301, James Clay.